let's talk about Fight Club. I mean Fight Club. I mean Fight Club. I mean, what's this episode called? Combat. Was it a shock to you that Mickey wrote this episode? Oh, wait, he did? He wrote this episode? wrote this one. Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't know he wrote any Doctor Who or Torchwood episodes. That's weird. <laughs> There's stuff about this that I like, but I'm just gonna open with how this episode is literally Fight Club. <laughs> just literally. For me, it was mostly pretty forgettable. It was mostly about Owen just dealing with his stuff and being a jerk about it. I don't know, man. I, I just had a hard time even concentrating on this one. <laughs> Actually, you know, let's talk about Owen now because this is all part of the thing. It's not even just that we took the basic premise of there is a club where people fight. Specifically, a guy who has anger issues meets, like, another guy in a sort of casual setting. They hit it off. The other guy is like, I know you've got this kind of, like, anger inside of you. I know a way to, like, vent out your frustrations and feel more like a man and feel like you have more control of your life. And he takes him to this place where all of these guys feel disenfranchised. The lead guy has all these speeches about how, like, here in this, like, fight club, we take control of our lives like they mentioned something specifically i think about like we're a generation with no goal or no purpose or we were a generation that was raised wrong or something and it's like it's pretty much exactly lines from fight club tyler durden in that movie is like we're a generation raised by women we had no great war we had no thing to strive toward so like we're lost and adrift this isn't even a fight club ripoff it's a fight club copy i was half expecting it to turn out that this guy and owen were secretly the same person the whole time <laughs> i guess uh mickey was supposed to write a script and he was uh, watching fight club on television and forgot and he was like oh crap <laughs> okay, I'm gonna copy this. <laughs> it's like, okay, Russell, here you go. <laughs> Only thing about it that's different is that after they beat each other up, they then go in to get beat up by a weevil. I don't remember seeing this episode, but at some point, like before we figure out what the deal is, I was saying to myself, like, Weevil Fight Club, Weevil Fight Club. I think when we see them, like, get taken into the truck, and, like, what I expected was it to be, like, they're collecting weevils to, like, fight them with each other, like, cockfights, but no, we ended up going for the straight-up fight club thing. Also, I don't even understand how you could fight a weevil. They're, like, five times stronger than a human, and we and we saw, like, when you put someone in there with them, they just tear them apart. Yeah, or, like, because most people will be like, okay, I'm done, let me out, but Owen and this other guy are like, no, just just let him come after me. I don't care. Well, I understand Owen because he's uh I don't even know if he's genuinely suicidal, like the way that Jack can come off sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think Owen cares that much if he dies. I don't think he's like seeking death. I think he just has no direction. This is the thing that I like, which is building off of last episode where Owen really opened himself up for the first time in the whole show and kind of got it thrown in his face. And now he can't just go back to the way he was. Like, I really like the scene where he goes to the bar and this lady is trying to flirt with him and he's just not having any of it. He's actually trying to be kind of mature about it. Like, okay, just can you leave it? Just leave her alone. Just get out of here. That guy is who Owen very easily could have been if he was in a bad mood like earlier in the season. And like Owen has gone through this very dramatic emotional shift. And he can't just go back to the way things were, and he can't deal with it. I think he's at the point where he just doesn't care. Well, this weevil's in the cage right now. I really don't care. Let's let him kill me, even though that would be a horrible it way to go. <laughs> could just be that he wants to feel something, like anything. And the only thing that he can feel is, like, pain or this anger, and so he lets all that stuff out. It's almost kind of uncomfortable, just what a dark place he's in. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, gosh. At the same time, I still have problems feeling sorry for him because he's just so mean and so awful to everyone else while he's going through crap. <laughs> he's remarkably tame to most of them in this episode. The next episode is when he's kind of going to get personal and like really let his emotions take over. Yeah. But here he's just kind of locked up in his own brain. It's more of an overhall thing with me. Yeah. <laughs> when this, it's hard for me to like him. Or feel sorry for him. I can't remember. Is this episode where Reese freaked out or not? Oh, yes. Let's talk about Reese. Uh, it's like the opening shot. 
It's the first scene. Jack is chasing a weevil around. Gwen is nearby with Reese having a date. Uh, Jack comes in, is like, hey, come on, we gotta go. Gwen's like, all right, sorry, uh, Reese, I, like, we're having a good time, but I gotta do my job. He throws a tantrum like a child. Yeah, even before she says that she has to go. And first of all, he gets, like, burned for stuff. He's like, hey, man, that's my girlfriend. And, like, this calm down, dude. Like, automatically, he's already getting possessive and creepy. And then... She said, oh, no, this is my boss, Jack, and stuff. Shut the fuck down. I'm like, wow. I mentioned this with Random Shoes. I'm always kind of shocked when this show drops an F-bomb. Like, I should be used to it by now, but I never am. And when it happened in this episode, I'm like, Reese, dude, Jesus Christ, calm down. Yeah, and especially right when she said, this is my boss. Yeah, I get that you don't understand what her job even is, but can you, like, calm down for five seconds? She's trying to be a professional. Like, she has work to do. Let her do her job. After he talks down to her, just being, like, verbally abusive, he goes, aren't you going to sit here and eat with me? Eh. (laughs) I'm like, well, for love of God, do you have any self-awareness what you just did, dude? Like, yes, I'm going to go sit down with the guy verbally abusing me in front of my boss, you, you literally remind me of big old man baby bears. It's like, no wonder she ran away. I mean, to be fair, Gwen also screws up quite a bit in this episode. She drugs Reese. <laughs> That's bad, too. But I will say, before we get to that, I do not like that even afterwards, he tries to punish her because she won't eat with him after he screams at her in front of her boss. I'm like, wow, how abusive and creepy can you get? <laughs> Yeah, like, for the most part, like, what we've had before, like, the scene of him being mad that she lied in, um, in the last episode, like, stuff that will happen later on, for the most part, I'm like, okay, this isn't strictly speaking healthy, but it feels like normal relationship stuff. Like, I can see two people going through this stuff and still being like, you know what, we had a disagreement, tempers were flared, but in the end, we still love each other. Moments like this, I'm like, how do you stay together after that? That's just kind of really uncomfortable. Yeah, and especially, like I said, anytime this people start punishing people and trying to dominate and control over each other. It's the whole control issue thing. Like, he's being really controlling, and it's weird. Yeah, relationships are not supposed to be controlling. People are not supposed to be controlling one another. It's creepy. Yeah. But uh, we will talk about Glenn, though. She does do something bad in this episode, as you said. She tried to do the drugging him thing which he has this whole conversation with him she admits to cheating on him there he has an appropriately react i can understand him being mad there because it's like you're telling me you cheated on me and you just drugged me the only reason that she comes forward is because she wants forgiveness she keeps desperately trying to get him to say gwen it's okay gwen it's all right i forgive you and he doesn't say it like everyone wants forgiveness for things that they screw up and whenever you admit to doing something wrong implicitly what you want is forgiveness but like the way that she's just so feels like she's entitled to that forgiveness i'm kind of unsure how i'm supposed to feel about this scene because the actress eve miles is playing it genuinely kind of unhinged like gwen seems almost kind of yandere in this scene in a way that she has never felt in the series up to this point like, she comes off really like she's got a couple of screws loose. Yeah, she seems like she's spiraling in this episode. And also the scene after where she's like, she's got the pizza, and then she's I love, crying. I love, <laughs> I love that, just because I felt so bad for laughing, but it's like, Gwen is like sitting there eating a pizza, and it looks like it has pineapple on it, and she just <laughs> breaks out into tears. And it's like, I'd love it if you were watching this show having missed the previous scenes. The first you see of Gwen in the episode, it's just, it seems like she's just crying because of the pizza. <laughs> God. She's just like, oh, the only thing I got in my life is this stupid pineapple pizza. Oh, God, this pizza is so terrible. It's bringing <laughs> the tears. Oh, God, I could see that. That would be so hilarious. <laughs> this pizza's supposed to be delicious, but it's so terrible. It's interesting to have this be the episode where Gwen and Owen are both, like, really, really the worst of themselves. And that's in direct build from the previous episode. But I don't know. I'm just, it's kind of lost to me among the fact that it's just Fight Club. 
Yeah. And also, I will mention this. Um, the whole Glenn and her cheating and Owen being with her together. Nothing comes out of any of this. This is the end of it. It's never mentioned again. I'm partially okay with that and partially not. I feel like that's a conversation we will have to have another time. I was just going to say, it seemed like a big waste of time to me, but <laughs> we'll get yeah. more of that. But, but uh, also, did you know that this show takes place in 2007? <laughs> because if you didn't realize that, we have a scene where the crazy frog ringtone plays to remind you of that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I almost forgot that. Thank you for reminding me. It was such a shocker to be watching an episode of this show and be reminded that, that existed. Oh, yeah. Good time. If I remember correctly, the crazy frog had a little pee pee. He did. It was so off putting. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've kind of said all I have to say. Like, there's good stuff here. The Fight Club ness of it is a detriment. But uh, also, Toshiko looks like Velma in this episode, and I like it. <laughs> Everybody likes Velma. She's the sexy geek. <laughs> Tosh is cool, yeah. but we will talk more about how Tosh is cool next episode. We're in the end game now. You're almost it's there. 